Welcome back. We're now doing order of operations. A couple of things about the order of operations. There are some pretty neat ways to remember it. Many of you may have heard, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. You may also have heard something called PEMDAS. Um, they're nice ways to remember what, should, what you should write down. I generally write down the symbols like this to remember it. So notice there's a set of parentheses there, and I'm going to put a one underneath that because that's always the first thing that we do. Exponents are always the second thing that we do. Multiplying and dividing are always the third thing that we do, and they come together. So you just do them in order from left to right as you find them when you get to that step. And the same thing is true with adding and subtracting. You do all of those in order when you come to that step. With order of operation problems, I like to sweep the problem. It's a four step process. Pretty straightforward. When I'm done, I'll explain why the order of operations is what it is. But it's a four step thing, so you sweep the problem each time and you do what's there. So with this first example, it says parentheses. Now some of you may be looking and say, oh, there's parentheses there. There are. Is there anything to do inside the parentheses? The answer is no. These parentheses were put here to indicate multiplication, which is going to come in a moment. So we sweep the problem, no parentheses to deal with. We sweep the problem a second time, no exponents to deal with. We haven't done anything on paper, yet we've gone through two steps. The third step, any multiplying and dividing, and the answer is yes, it's right here. Three times negative four. So I'm just going to rewrite six plus, and then three times negative four, that's negative 12. So I've got to now do six plus negative 12. We've done the third step. The fourth step is adding and subtracting. 6 plus negative 12 is negative 6. So that's the first example. The second one, we look at the problem, parentheses again. There's parentheses here. Now the parentheses are just making that 5 negative, nothing to do inside. The second set of parentheses, well, that's negative 2 in there. This parentheses is to contain the negative 2 for the exponent, and it also shows the multiplication. So, no parentheses to deal with, exponents. So now I'm going to write 9 plus negative 5 plus 2, and we'll put the parentheses there, negative 2 to the second power. Negative 2 times negative 2, that's positive 4. So that's all I did on this, is I did the exponents. The third sweep, the multiplying and dividing, 9 plus, negative 5 plus, 2 times 4. So I'm going to do 2 times 4, and that is 8. Now on to the adding and subtracting. 9 plus negative 5 plus 8. Now adding you can do in any order you want. So some people are going to do 9 plus negative 5, and they're going to get 4. 4 plus 8 is 12. Other people are going to go ahead and add the positives first. 9 plus 8 is 17. 17 plus negative 5 is 12. You'll get to the right answer either way. For the third example, remember we're still doing these in order. Parentheses. Some of you are like, yay, we finally get to do something inside the parentheses. So I've got negative 4, parentheses, 9 minus 17. Well, 9 minus 17 is going to become 9 plus negative 17. When you convert that, adding a negative, or adding the opposite, excuse me. 9 plus negative 17, that's negative 8. Divided by negative 8. All right, so we've done the parentheses. Exponents, don't see any exponents here. Again, sometimes you do steps and you're like, hey, the third step is multiply and divide. So I get negative 4 times negative 8. 
That would be positive 32. And 32 divided by negative 8, that would be negative 4. Now, some of you at this point might be saying, well, I can do this and I don't have to write down that much. That is true. This is a fairly safe way to do it. A lot of times when you try to shorten it up and do more than one step at a time, you end up making mistakes and doing operations out of order. What I always say is, don't be afraid to use a little paper. It's okay. We'll just kill a tree for math. It's not a big deal. Okay, it might be a big deal, but still. You can recycle the paper. All right, for the third one, parentheses. I got some parentheses here. 7 minus 13 becomes 7 plus negative 13. So I've got negative 5 times negative 6 divided by negative square root of 100. So the parentheses were first. Now about this point, some of you might be saying, hey, there's a square root there. Uh, it doesn't mention square roots in our order of operations. Exponents and square roots are opposites. An exponent, or I should say a square root, really is an exponent. It's in the same family, so we're going to do that next. So negative 5 times negative 6 divided by negative 10, because the square root of 100 is 10. And then last but not least, Negative 5 times negative 6 is 30. 30 divided by negative 10. Sorry, I have to write a little small there. Hopefully you can see that on your own paper. 30 divided by negative 10 is negative 3. Now, I put the last one on here. It's really, really, you know, it's like just adding and subtracting. Because there are some people that just believe that adding comes before subtracting. You do it left, for, left to right. So 20 minus 10 is 10, plus 10 is 20. Anybody that wants to argue with that, here's what we'll do. You can send me $20 in the mail. That's the $20, all right? And then I'll come back and a week later, I'll send you $10 back. The third week, you can send me $10 because I'll need that $10. And if you think adding comes first, We'll go on ahead and we'll do the 10 plus the 10 is 20. 20 minus 20 is zero. I'll owe you nothing. We'll all be good. All right? How's that? That sound good? No. Okay. I didn't think you'd buy it. All right. Now for the finale. Why do we do it in this order? You have to remember that the simplest operation is addition. With addition being the simplest operation, multiplication is a form of addition. So if I say something like 4 plus 3 times 5, well, think about it a minute. What does the 3 times 5 mean? The 3 times 5 means 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. Plus three. So if we take a moment and we write the 3 times 5 is an addition problem, I would end up having 4 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. So, and then we could add that up. It would make no sense to do 4 plus 3 is 7 because this multiplication doesn't intend you to do 7 times 5. So you have to do your multiplication before you would do your addition. Now, if we take that a step further, and I have something like 6 times 2 plus 2 to the third, well, what does 2 to the third mean? 2 to the third means 2 times 2 times 2, and you know you do the multiplication before you do the addition. Well, you're going to have to do exponents before you do your multiplication. Lastly is parentheses. Parentheses is really just a way that we can make something happen first. Maybe we intend to do 3 plus 4 before we multiply times 7. So if you don't want to do the 4 times 7 and add 3, but you need to add those two, well, that's where the parentheses come in. I hope it was helpful. Good luck.